Okay. Um, our office uh, was uh, founded in 1961 um, as a field-based uh, office um, within the Office of Acquisition and Sustainment. Um, its original name was the Office of Economic Adjustment, or OEA. For those of you who are uh, familiar uh, with that name, uh, we've gone through some name, name change a couple of years ago to be called the OLDCC. Um, and our primary mission is to support um, the readiness and resiliency of both defense communities and installations, um, which is a priority for, for the department's national uh, defense strategy. And we do this by providing technical and financial assistance to states territories and communities that are invested in the defense mission. Um, some of the major areas of work and initiatives aligned with um, supporting defense industries, which I think is today's target audience, is uh, the various um, grants and technical assistance programs that we have to support defense manufacturing and supply chain support. Um, we do this by engaging defense industry stakeholders um, to determine best practices and um, bring up innovative solutions for current um, challenges and, and maintaining combat readiness. To give you an overall uh, idea of our program activity areas, um, it's, um, the, our program activities are primarily divided into two. The first bucket is grouped under community investment, um, and the programs, the grant programs we have under that are meant to support uh, military installations uh, mission while also enhancing the capacity of communities surrounding the military installations. Under that, we have um, the public schools on military installations program, uh, which supports the construction or renovation of um, schools on military installations that are deemed uh, to be deficient in capacity or condition. Um, the other program we have is the Community Noise Mitigation Program, which is a grant program that assists activities uh, meant to uh, mitigate impact of uh, noise um, coming from the military installation. So we also have a competitive infrastructure funding program uh, called the Defense Community Infrastructure Pilot Program. Um, we launched it um, a, a couple years ago the uh, in, in fiscal year 20, uh, the first time, and this is our third year of implementation, and the program supports infrastructure development. Um, that have direct impact on enhancing military installation missions while also improving capacity of the surrounding communities. Um, we also have medical facility access roads program uh, or roads, we call it in short. I'm, I'm also the program activity lead for that. And this program supports um, the construction of uh, roads uh, or renovation uh, enhancement to support uh, increased access to military medical facilities. Um, also have Pacific Readiness Program. This program is uh, targeting the territory of Guam um, to support construction development, um, historic cultural uh, preservation for communities that have been impacted by the large uh, military installation construction that we've had there. So that's the first bucket. And the second that bucket is our community adjustment programs, um, and these programs are designed to support communities uh, to be able to uh, adjust to changing um, business environments or changing natural environments uh, with their, within, within their communities. Um, under that, we have a compatible use program, which supports land use planning of communities surrounding military installations to make it compatible with the installations and land use planning plan, um, kind of aligned uh, between the two. Uh, we also have inst installation resilience program that supports resiliency planning, environmental resiliency planning of communities surrounding installations. Um, we also have um, growth and realignment programs that are designed to uh, help communities adjust to changing installation um, sizes. It could be base closure, um, it could be base size reduction or base size increase. 
whenever that happens in the communities, we have these grant programs to support the communities, help them adjust to that changing um, environment um, induced by the change in base, uh, base size or base closure. Um, the other three programs we have under community adjustment, I have highlighted them in bold here, uh, which I think would be of interest to you because they are designed to support um, defense industry. Um, the first two are the industry diversification grant program and industry transition. Um, these, these two programs are non-competitive. Um, they are uh, serviced on the first come, first serve. Uh, first Third basis, and we implement them throughout the year annually. Um, and they are designed to support workforce development, um, research and development, technical assistance, um, training, etc., to enhance the capacity of defense industries. Um, and I'll delve more in depth about the, the, these programs in the next slide. Um, and and the, the third program is the Defense Manufacturing Community Support Program, which of course you are familiar with. Um, this program is designed to enhance regional partnerships and uh, to improve capacity of the defense manufacturing sector. Um, so a little bit more about uh, these programs providing assistance to defense industries. So the first one, DMCSB, uh, we are actually currently uh, uh, openly re receiving applications uh, for fiscal year 22. Um, Congress appropriated 30 million uh, for the program. Um, and submissions um, are evaluated annually uh, for their responsiveness to areas where the department is working to develop capabilities. Uh, for this fiscal year, referring to uh, more recent policy documents um, and studies, we are targeting regions that have high capacity and priority sectors such as biotechnology, hypersonics, um, kinetic capabilities, energy storage and batteries, um, castings, forgings, microelectronics, submarines, um, and shipbuilding workforce. And um, it, it is a, a consortium that applies to get uh, a, the designation and funding for this program, as you know. Um, AIM Hire received designation and support from this program in the first year this program started being implemented in the fiscal year 2020. Um, and a lead organization should be submitting that application on behalf of the of the consortium, and that applicate, uh, and that lead organization needs to be eligible to manage uh, federal grant awards. Uh, so for your case, it's um, Catalyst Connection, uh, which was the lead organization. Um, and some of the eligible activities we have here uh, for the program include um, equipment and facility upgrades, workforce development, research and development, supply chain development, small business assistance. Um, and we have a two-step process for delivering the program. The first one is to get designation as a defense manufacturing community. Um, so for, for this fiscal year, the application deadline, as I mentioned, we had an open application. The deadline is July 19. Um, and once um, communities have received that designation as a defense manufacturing community, which is a five-year designation, then they get invited to apply uh, for funding their proposed project. Um, then that's step two. Um, the maximum grant award is five million with a 20% non-federal match. Um, and we expect to make the grant award behold before the end of the fiscal year, which is September 30th, um, 2022. The other programs that we have are uh, as I mentioned to you, the Industry Transition and Diversification Grant Program. These programs are non-competitive. Uh, they are not typically targeting regional partnerships, although the type of activities that they are implementing is pretty much similar to DNPSB. Uh, it may be relatively smaller in scale per unit uh, because it's less of a regional initiative. Uh, but uh, the programs are designed to support you know, workforce development, research, um, innovation, uh, training, technical assistance, um, et cetera. And they are designed to respond to the local, you know, downturns um, or to changing defense business environment. 
um, eligible recipients include here uh, states, counties, municipalities, um, tribal nations, and other political subdivisions of states, uh, special purpose units, etc. just being eligible to manage, they need to be eligible to manage federal grant awards. Um, so that's pretty much an overview of the of our organization and the support programs that we have. Um, yeah, here is uh, he, this is my contact email um, if you want to reach out to me. Um, and next, I would like to take a few minutes to talk about overall uh, what the um, DoD priorities are um, and uh, what we consider as strategic enablers, the priority sectors that we are targeting, and some of the best practices uh, for partnering with, uh, with DoD. Um, so the, the, to, to secure defense supply chain, uh, some of the strategic enablers uh, for DoD as first off is workforce development. Um, there are skill gaps, um, as you know, especially in the manufacturing sector and the engineering sector. So we're looking to enhance capacity in that um, and the defense industry grant uh, supporting grant programs that we have at OLDCC are designed to support those kind of workforce development activities. Um, cyber posture is another area. Uh, we want to increase capacity of the defense industries, especially those who are doing business with DOD. Uh, workforce training, cyber security is another area. Um, enhancing capacity of the manufacturing sector, especially manufacturing industry. Oh, um, additive manufacturing is, a, is another strategic enabler. Uh, also giving support to small businesses uh which are key members of DoD um, supply chain. Um, in terms of the priority sectors we're targeting, and this is a constant constantly changing area uh because the gap in the supply chain changes um uh, you know at a minimum every two, three years. The current um you know priority sectors include um improving kinetic capabilities, um uh, the, you know, the missile systems, um, energy storage, uh, renewable energy um, is another key area. Um, shipbuilding sector uh, is another key area. Microelectronics, um, castings and forging um, is another key sector that we're looking to improve capacity in currently and, uh, and fill the supply gap. Um, what, what I'll say and, and would encourage, um, you know, defense industries is to keep track of what the what the current priorities uh, and demands for DoD are through the, you know, recent uh, policy documents that are, uh, you know, regularly being published. Um, one example is, for example, the defense industrial base report that highlights what the supply chain gaps are, workforce gaps, and, uh, and you know, strategic recommendations. That will help you align, uh, you know, the work that you're doing uh, with what the department is doing, uh, because you know, after all, the department is one of the largest procurement agencies, and all the you know grants and support programs that we have are designed to create a pipeline of uh, capable suppliers for the department. Um, on the issue of how to partner with the Department of Defense. Um, I think um, your partnership with the Manufacturing Innovation Institute is one key area uh, that I would encourage you to keep doing. Um, AIM Hire has a very strong partnership with, you know, the ARM Institute, America Makes, et cetera. And that partnership helps you uh, have access to some of the technical assistance resources that the institutes have and in the workforce development and building capacity of the manufacturers. Um, you can also directly partner with um, the Department of Defense Manufacturing and Technology Department, which finances uh, the Manufacturing Innovation Institute. Um, the institutes are also could also be financed through other federal departments. Um, I think currently there are about 14 uh, institutes, nine of which are directly supported by the Department of Defense. And they may be tapping on from other federal agencies as well. But the Department of Defense Institute uh, 
are key to partnering with because they are working on areas that are of priority to the department. Um, and they have specialized in specific sectors. It, it could be, you know, additive manufacturing or space technology or biotechnology. So whenever your, your area aligns to what they are working on is what where you can tap that uh, partnership and assistance from. The service areas also have uh, the military services, the Navy, et cetera, have their own uh, Mantec units. So you have the Navy Mantec and Army Mantec, et cetera, and through which they also um, uh, procure some of the products that the department is looking for. So keeping track of what the, the demand is from that area is also another key area. Um, to improve uh, you know, capacity of small businesses, the DOD is, is, uh, is also uh, targeting small businesses and attracting them through the SBIR, STTR, STTR program. Um, there are different submission requests through that uh, channel. So I would encourage you to look into that. Um, there are, the, the, the department's procurement process and standard is uh, at times very cumbersome and complicated. And in order to address that, uh, there are um, techni techni procurement technical assistance centers, or PTAC, um, that every state has. Uh, Pennsylvania has one. Um, so I, I would encourage you to, to, to get in touch with them as well, because they have been they have received support from the department to provide assistance, technical assistance, and how to do business with DOD, um, and also I help you identify potential and uh, contracting opportunities with DOD. Um, another program I would highlight is the Mentor Protege Program, or MPP, uh, which supports uh, small businesses especially from underserved communities, um, new businesses looking to enter the defense sector. Um, the, the program supports mentor relationships with other uh, defense businesses to enhance their capacity in, in doing business with DOD. Um, another area is that the National Security Innovation Network, or NSIN. Um, it's a network that hosts hackathons, competitions, for you know, um, innovative products um, through which they att attract entrepreneurs, academia, um, you know, new businesses. Um, so I, I would also encourage you in doing that. Um, as a consortium, you have a you know regional approach, and that regional approach partnership. I think you you are already doing all of that <laughs> as a consortium, as Aim Higher, um, if you are part of it. So. That's something that the department would encourage, and I think that would also drive you in, in, in having that better partnership with the department. Um, I think that that's, that's what I wanted to share overall. Uh, I'm happy to take on questions if you have any questions regarding the, the programs that we have within OLDCC or overall in general. Well, great. Uh, thank you so much, Iwat. Uh, and if you do have any questions, you know, anyone on the line, please post it in the uh, the questions panel or the chat window. Either one will be taking a look at both of them. Uh, so in the meantime, while people are you know thinking over, see if they have any other questions. Um, one, you mentioned this the the mentor protege program. If you want, can you mm -hmm. kind of go over that? I caught most of it, but it did. Was this intended in terms of like a mentor, as in someone experienced in working with DoD and someone who's looking to get into it, be it you know small companies or you know manufacturers? Um, can you expand on that one a little bit more and the intention or the goal of it? Yeah. Um, so the program connects businesses that have uh, experience and and partnering with DoD. Uh, with those businesses that are new entrance entrance to doing business with the defense sector, um, and especially give the priority to businesses that come from underserved communities. Um, there, there is, um, I, I think, there's a web page where you can go to and kind of connect with 
um, the, the stakeholders within your state um, to to uh, make that connection and be part of the program. It, there is a an entry and application process to it. Mm -hmm. um, but the primary goal is to create mentor relationship between experienced businesses and those new businesses entering the defense sector. Okay, no, that sounds very interesting. Is that something you could uh, maybe pass some information on to, to us and we can share it with the, the group, maybe even put up a you know blog post or something about that? It sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm happy to share all the information, you know, web links, for example. I'll, I'll email you the web okay. links for all the programs that I just mentioned. Yeah, no, that, that sounds uh, fantastic. Um, let me just double check here. I don't think we've seen it yet. Um, another question, you, know, you mentioned a lot of different strategic priorities in, in the manufacturing space. And obviously, with a lot of our small manufacturers, you know, whether they're a machine shop or a, a casting supplier or injection molder, otherwise, or additive manufacturing, you know, a lot for for them would be when you mention one of those priorities, that may say, oh, I'm interested there. I might be able to help that or do something in that space. How do you recommend? Since it's, you know, I would imagine a lot of different departments, a lot of different services may have similar efforts. How do you recommend, like, say, if you've got a, you know, an aluminum caster and they want to see what casting-related opportunities are out there, is there a uh, a good way to do that, or how do you recommend them go about that? Um, so it depends on, on what their interests are. For example, uh, including the, the the grant programs that I mentioned that we have in our office, these programs are targeting to support manufacturers working in these priority area to improve their capacity if so if the interest is to improve capacity in these sectors and you have a um, certain level of asset or activity that you're doing in this area but you're looking to go one step further including you know learning on to looking to understand what the procurement process and standards are for supplying these types of products that are deemed to be of priority so if you're looking for the grant programs, some of the grant programs I pro provided examples on are one. If you're looking to do business with the department in these sectors, working with the procurement technical assistance centers, um, as well as the Manufacturing Innovation Institute, um, they are there to provide assistance and kind of ha help ha um, have you access to the procurement process. Um, for DoD, um, DoD Mantec um, is the is the supporter of the institute, um, and each service area has um, procurement process through the DoD Man DoD Mantec. So Navy has uh, a Mantec uh, office, Army has that, and they post different type of innovative procurement requests and submission requests um, regularly. So keeping track of that is another uh, is is another opportunity you can look into. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, no, I, for sure, for sure. And I think the last one, uh, just more of a hopefully a, you know a plug for some future um, some future webinars. Because you mentioned a lot of different groups that have you know tie-ins from DoD and that you would recommend engaging with so i think we certainly look forward to and and hope that you know we can pull some additional sessions together you know when we start up again later in the year uh, with some of these other resources that you think our, our manufacturers uh, would be interested to connect with and learn about yeah absolutely happy to work with you on that okay well with that i think we've uh, hit our our time here so thank you once again Hiwat, for for joining us and uh, we, you know, I say we really appreciate your time and sharing all this great information. And for those on the line, you know, just a reminder, we will have, we do have a recording uh, that will be posted up on the Aim to Learn website, and uh, you'll be able to access those here in our break until September 8th when we uh, kick off the Aim to Learn series again. So thank you again, Hiwat, and have a, a great day, everyone. Thanks. Bye.